So what I've put on the board here is a little definition of economics to kind of get us started. You know, so let's just tear this down kind of a couple of the key words in here. So economics is a science that attempts to understand and predict the choices made by individuals as a result of scarcity. So let me hit a couple of the key words in here. Economics is a science. You know, Nobel Prizes are only given in the scientific disciplines. There is a Nobel Prize in economics that we were talking about, Gary Becker one. So first off, let's talk about what's the difference between scientific disciplines and non-scientific disciplines, because I think this is important. The difference is scientific disciplines use the scientific method, meaning they come up with theories, they collect data, they test the theory against the data. If the data don't support the theory, you reject the theory and you move on. And if the data support the theory, you keep the theory and you keep going, right? So this is what economics is. What a traditional economist does is a research economist to sit and come up with theories. And then we have other economists who are empirical guys who go out and test these theories. And yes, we can have disagreements on which data to use or what the data say. But in the long run, our profession and the views that are expressed in an economics textbook change just like they do in physics or astronomy based on discoveries and theories. Uh, but they are tested. So when we get to the law of demand, it's not that that's some value judgment or opinion. It's just like the law of gravity. We've subjected it to a lot of testing, and it works, and it holds. So just for what, uh, for what that's worth. All right, so what is the job of economics? Well, we kind of try to attempt to understand and predict the choices that people make. And let's be a little more specific, made by individuals. One of the cornerstones of economics is that we are methodological individualists. We always approach any economic problem by thinking about the people whose decisions are affected. We don't talk about groups as a whole. You would never hear an economist say something like, like a political scientist might say, France is mad at Germany. France is, who, who in France is mad at who in Germany, right? I mean, if the government passes a law, it's not the government that passes a law. The question is, can we explain why these people chose to vote yes for it, these people chose to vote no? We can boil it down on any economic problem to the individuals involved, and that's what we do as a science, because we're looking at individual behavior and we can predict that. So usually when we're trying to understand a theory, we try to take an example of a person to tease it out so that we can get a better understanding of it. And you'll see a lot of good examples of that today as I continue. So why do we have to make these choices? Why is it that every day we're stuck making all these choices. You know, what am I going to do tonight? Well, like the other night I was sitting around, I had one friend call me up, he wanted me to come eat dinner with him, and then I had a wedding to go to, whatever, and I'm trying to go, eh, I like to do that, but I got to go to this wedding, I really didn't know the people that well. I'm like, what am I going to do? I had to make a choice. Why did I have to make a choice? because my time is scarce, right? There's not as much of it to do everything I want. Life is full of this problem called scarcity. You've got a limited amount of income, limited resources, limited time, and that forces us to make choices. Right? There's very few things in the world that aren't scarce. Uh, scarcity is when there's not enough of something freely available from nature to fully satisfy human desires. I mean, you can take a breath take a, and take another one. You can have as many as you want because air is not scarce, but that's not the way my income works, right? right? When I'm going out to spend money or the resources in our economy or whatever, when I go to the shopping mall and I'm walking around and I see a new sport coat I like, what's the first thing I do? Price tag. Why? Well, because I have a limited budget, and if I spend money on that, that's money I don't have to spend on other things. So as a, as a consumer, as a business, we're always faced with making choices because of the scarcity of the resources at our disposal. The textbook goes into what the main categories of resources are that economists consider, land, labor, and capital. Um, just to give you a quick example so you know what that terminology means, capital being the most important one that a lot of people don't understand. Like if we think about today as being a production process, the land's kind of obvious. We've got a piece of ground in a building here that is being used to produce this. I'm the labor, right? And capital is everything else. So capital are man-made resources that go into producing other things. So this whiteboard is a piece of capital. The whiteboard markers are capital. Capital isn't just machinery and equipment. It is that. But capital is the desks and the chairs. It's all the, the man-made resources that go into producing other things. And those are scarce as well because it takes time and effort uh, to do those.